We're joined now by Professor Benjamin Newman, Chair of Biological Sciences at Texas AMN University, Texarkana. So, Professor, first let's start with this WHO report. What do you make of the findings? Yeah, the findings are, for at least the scientific community, I think, relatively unsurprising. So this is all information that came out relatively early on, the association with that particular wet market and the idea that uh, most likely all the relatives of this virus do seem to be in bats. And so the conclusions of the WHO's report very much, I would say, agree with um, the conclusions that I had come to from reading the literature and looking for information. Well, there are still a lot of questions about the origins regardless. What do you say to critics who doubt that this uh, coronavirus came from an animal? And it, is it possible that we can still learn more about it? Oh, that's what science does. We always learn more about things, absolutely. Um, uh, in terms of uh, the way people think, so for a scientist, the one piece of data that would be really convincing in all of this is to find a virus that is almost exactly alike to SARS coronavirus 2, the one that causes COVID-19. Right now, we are not there. Our nearest virus is still something like a thousand mutations different from the one that's actually circulating around in people. And there's no good way to bridge that thousand nucleotide gap. We are close, but we're not quite there. And in terms of people who would um, criticize the Wuhan Institute for Virology, I, I think that's mostly political. There are a lot of institutions of similar caliber with similar sort of safeguards in place across the U.S. and across Europe. I've worked at a few of these, and there are enough controls built in to just baked into the framework of these places that it's really difficult for anything to come out um, accidentally. However, there are 1,411 species of bats. A lot of these things carry viruses very similar to SARS coronavirus, and most of these have never been sampled in a laboratory. I think that's going to be the most productive avenue, and then looking and trying to find if there was an intermediate animal that was involved may also be helpful in learning how to prevent something like this from happening again because certainly SARS-like viruses are out there, and this is very much a possibility that we will see viruses like this again at some point, just emerging from the natural world. So you're telling everyone to trust science. Um, I'd like to quickly get your take on the COVAX program so far. Um, do you think we are seeing more equitable distribution of the vaccines around the world? I think so. So early on, we've seen some problems. It's mostly internal fighting within the EU over who gets particular doses uh, when there's a limited supply and a much larger demand. But I think through COVAX, I think through the efforts of uh, the United States in giving away uh, doses of uh, the AstraZeneca vaccine to Canada and Mexico and countries like China, uh, giving vaccine doses to many different countries in the world, this is really positive. It's hard with a limited supply to make sure that it's completely fair and everybody gets as much as they want to do. But with a program like COVAX overseeing this, at least you've got somebody who I would trust uh, in charge of the process and trying to monitor to make sure that it's reasonably fair. I do think, though, as we come out of this, we may see more smaller countries start to grow their own vaccine production industries. A technology like mRNA vaccine making is very much open to uh, even relatively small operations that could be set up at relatively low cost. And so I would hope to see something like this to increase future preparedness, not just against coronaviruses, but all the other viruses that have up to this point been a little bit too difficult to deal with. And Professor, just a little bit of time left, but uh, China is working to vaccinate its own population as well. What are you expecting to see in the weeks and months ahead as we're seeing complaints with rollouts in different parts of the world? Well, there are complaints, yes, and that's people being people. Nobody likes a needle stuck in their arm, and I understand that. But we're also seeing results. Uh, so the nation of Israel is really heavily vaccinated. If I remember right, I thought they were over 50 percent uh, uh, vaccine delivery in the entire country. It's a small place, so it's actually feasible there. And what you're seeing in terms of numbers, whereas cases are rising in the U.S. and in most of Europe, as the vaccine is rolling out, but not quite that fast, numbers of cases are just dropping in uh, Israel. And it looks as though the vaccine is really effective against the latest variants that are out there. 
we've definitely got a window to be able to knock this thing out. And I just hope that we're able to get vaccine all around the world during that time. All right, Professor Benjamin Newman, great to hear from you. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.